note 68. Dante was tricked. Dante lowered his head and whispered a few words into Andrew's ear. A playful smile appeared on Andrew's face. I really like this kind of fun. Andrew said with a smile. Hey, what'd you tell him? Harold asked. It's a secret. You'll know tomorrow. Andrew said mysteriously. Alfred curled his lips and said, Forget it. Let's go. Hey, don't go. I still need you. Andrew said, You want to play with me? Alfred said with a smile. Yes. Andrew said, Then what are we waiting for? Let's hurry up and leave. Alfred said brightly. Andrew threw his brothers a flirtatious glance and said, Alfred, Tony, Harold, let's go. Looking at Andrew and Alfred's back, Harold could only shake his head. Andrew, aren't you afraid of scaring others when you go out with such a bruised face? Harold asked. It's fine, he has a thick skin. Tony teased. Hey, where do you want to go? Harold asked curiously. You'll know tomorrow. Dante said. I won't ask anymore. I'm going to sleep in the guest room. Tony said. I'm leaving too. My princess is still waiting for me. Harold said. After everyone had left, Dante asked the servants to clean up the living room. When Dante returned to his room, he found Renfri sitting cross-legged on her clothes. Her hair was a mess. What's wrong? Dante asked affectionately. Dante, is Robert really your mother? Renfri asked with a frown on her face. Dante was a little surprised when he heard that, and he laughed. Yes, Mom likes jewelry design. But don't worry, Mom doesn't know about you. So, I'll explain everything to you. Dante said gently. Renfri's round face wrinkled. All right, it's time to rest. You still need to go to college tomorrow. Dante said softly. By the way, do you think I'll be stressed if I also design clothing? Renfrey asked. Harold and the others were just joking. Dante said. Renfrey pouted and said. But I take it seriously. Ugh, forget it. My brain is tired right now. Not only was my drawing stolen, but I lost the internship opportunity. I don't want to think about it anymore. I'm going to sleep. Dante looked at Renfrey and couldn't help but laugh. He'd found a way to cheer her up. Go to sleep. Dante said gently. Aren't you going to sleep? Renfrey asked. I still have some things to take care of. Be good. You go to sleep first. Dante said softly. Okay. Renfrey nodded. She obediently closed her eyes, and Dante waited for her to fall asleep before walking out quietly. Dante walked to the balcony and took out a cigarette to smoke. Dante liked to smoke. But he wasn't addicted. He never smoked in front of Renfri, because Renfri hated the smell of cigarettes. Dante held the cigarette in one hand and his phone in the other. He dialed a number. Hello? A gentle female voice when the call connected. I'm willing to see you again, Dante said roughly. What are you talking about? What do you mean by willing to see you again? The woman said with dissatisfaction. Have you been busy? When are you going to come back? Dante asked. It's not impossible for me to go back, but unless you find me a daughter-in-law, I won't. Dante's mother, Angela, said. Mom, stop messing around. Emma really misses you. Dante said. I know, but you don't know how envious I am when I see people carrying their grandchildren every day. Angela said. Mom, do you really want me to find a daughter-in-law for you? Dante asked. Are you talking nonsense? Look. You're not young anymore, Angela said. Dante heard his mom's words and shook his head helplessly. Every time they called, Angela would urge Dante to find a girlfriend. Okay, then I'll do as you wish. I'm already married and have gotten a marriage certificate, Dante said. The phone went silent. Mom, Dante shouted. Dante, are you serious? Are you trying to fool me? How old is she? What does she look like? Where does she live? Angela kept asking. Dante could only sigh. Mom, you've seen her too. Dante said. What? I've seen her? When? Angela asked. 
rent-free, the girl you rejected today. Dante said sharply. What? Rent-free? I don't approve. Angela said coldly. Why? Dante asked. She doesn't have any manners or respect for others. She forced people to kneel down and apologize, and even stole her sister's drawing. Angela hissed. Dante explained. Mom, you misunderstood everything. Rendon forced them to kneel down. I forced them to apologize to her. That drawing was originally hers. She told me how her sister has always hated that the drawing was hers. Ren is not the kind of person you think she is. What? Is this true? Angela asked. Why would I lie to you? If Ren was really that kind of person, how could I marry her? Dante said. My God, I actually fell for someone else's trick. Damn it, I'm so angry. Angela groaned. Dante heard Angela's words and smiled faintly. It's all right. Dante said. Daughter-in-law didn't blame me, right? Angela asked worriedly. She did not want her son to painstakingly find a daughter-in-law and divorce her because of her mistake. If that was the case, wouldn't her son blame her? Of course not. My wife has a good temper. Dante said proudly. Yes, not only does she have a good temper, but she is also young. Angela teased. Dante's face instantly darkened. She'll be ready in a few months. Dante said. Angela answered with a smile. I know. I have to go. I still have work here. Okay. When are you going to come back? Dante asked. It won't be a surprise if I tell you. All right, I'm hanging up. Angela said. Okay, bye-bye. Dante said. Dante hung up the phone and turned around. He looked at the person standing in front of him in surprise. Then he smiled lovingly.